I am Frank Schofield. My body is buried in the Seoul National Cemetery in Korea. How could I be the only one non-Korean among the Korean heroes who were buried in the National Cemetery? This is because I had witnessed firsthand the March 1st independence movement. It was a great honor and privilege to be the witness of the sacred voices of Korean people in 1919. I was born in England in 1889 and emigrated to Canada in 1907 after I got a doctoral degree in veterinary science at the University of Toronto, I set foot on Korean soil as a missionary of the Presbyterian Church of Canada in 1916, when I was 27 years old. I learned Korean language and culture and taught bacteriology and hygienics at the Severance Hospital. I made a Korean name for myself Suk Ho Pil, sounding much like Schofield. Suk means a rock, Ho means a tiger, and Pil means help, and sounded like the English word Pil. In that name, I bear the meaning of the solid will to help the Korean people. At that time, Korea had been under Japanese colonial rule since the Japanese-Korea Annexation of Treaty in 1910. Korean people were forced to abandon their own culture and language and be assimilated into Japanese language and culture. They were suffering from Japanese colonial exploitation and military rule. On the night of February the 5th, 1919, Lee Gap-sung, one of the Korean friends, came to my place confidentially and asked me to take an important role in the coming March 1st movement. I never forgot that moment. It sounded like a calling, the calling from the oppressed people of God. Religious leaders from Chin Do-gyo, the biggest religion in Korea at the time, as well as those from Buddhism and Christianity, joined to protect oppressive Japanese tyranny and declare Korean independence. I was surprised by their bold plan. The Japanese army was the strongest in East Asia. Japan defeated China and Russia, and even won World War I at that time. Against this powerful empire of Japan, the Korean people dared to gain independence through peaceful demonstrations. There was a list of 33 national representatives who signed the Declaration of Korean Independence. Among them were 16 Christian leaders. Without a doubt, to put their name on that list publicly meant to be persecuted or killed. They risked their lives to express the will of the Korean people toward independence. I was impressed by their heroic courage. I said to Gap Sung, I will definitely do what you are asking me to do as a liaison between the leaders of the movement and the foreign community in Korea and the international media. I spread the truth of this demonstration to the world by taking pictures and making reports. At 2 p.m. on March 1, over 5,000 Korea people gathered at Pagoda Park in Seoul. After reading out loud the Declaration of Korean Independence, people marched by, waving the Korean flag and shouting, De Han Dok Rip Mansei, which means Korean independence forever. It, con uh, it can be contrasted to the Tenno Haika Banzai of Japanese militarism. Koreans bravely cried out, Dihan Dokrip Mansai. All together repeat, Dihan Dokrip Mansai. Their cries were the sacred demand of justice, dignity, equality, peace, and freedom. Of course, Koreans didn't expect that the Japanese army with its guns and swords would be terrified of this nonviolent demonstration and then decide to go back to Japan gently. 
Koreans expected that they would be injured, imprisoned, tortured, and even killed by Japanese soldiers. Nonetheless, Korean people risked everything and raised up their voices. On that day alone, 134 people were arrested. Yet, demonstrations all across Korea just increased Koreans had resisted against injustice peacefully and fiercely. The March 1st movement did not result in independence immediately. Yet the demand for Korean independence and the peaceful coexistence of the world was the beginning of realizing them. The March 1st independence movement incarnated the word, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Although the Koreans remained largely peaceful, the Japanese military police reacted violently to suppress the independence movement. I heard of Major Kodama stating that the way to put Korean rioters is to beat them and kill them. I wrote an article in the Japan advertising telling them the story of an educated young man of about 19 years of age who was suspended from the ceiling and put water, soap, and pepper tea poured into his nostrils. Finally, he had a piece of flesh removed from his small toe. The bleeding was profuse, which seemed to satisfy the bloodthirsty appetite of the torturer. Another brutal example was that the Japanese government destroyed villages in rural areas. As soon as I heard of the news of massive massacre, I went seeing the two villages named Sokhan Ri and Jiam Ri. I was able to take photos of the destroyed church and village and meet the witnesses. I revealed these Japanese massacres to the world and Japanese government started to hate me like sin. But I had to keep speaking out. When I published the book, The Unquenchable Fire, I tried to put on record for the world the true story of Korean suffering and heroism in her fight for liberty. Unfortunately, I was forced to return to Canada in 1920. Massive pressure from the Japanese government on Severance Hospital and Presbyterian Church of Canada resulted in my abrupt recall. When I had to return to Canada, I strived to go back to Korea again, but it didn't work. I could not be in Korea. I tried to support Koreans' independence and the movement and witness the cry of, for independence as best as I could. I strongly disagree with the term political neutrality. To the Foreign Mission Board, I wrote this. It is my conviction that our educational and missionary work in Korea are solely for the sake of the Koreans. Under this situation of Japanese brutality, must we sit idle just watching developments? At class and church, we preach day and night that we must fight against evil and help weak people. And now, because of fear of police, we stand by hopelessly. If these people who have lost their country already lose their only remaining spirit for independence, whom are we going to help? And what is the justification for staying here? What would you believe? I was called Mrs. Kang by historians. I had a name, but no one knows my real name. I just was remembered only as the wife of Mr. Kang. I was killed in the massacre of Jamri. I was uneducated, but I also knew the fault of the Japanese ruling power. 
Last year, in 1918, the price of rice was tripled, not doubled, tripled. I couldn't afford to buy as much rice as my family needed. My family were rice farmers, but still, we were starving. The Japanese government took much of the product. In the market, I heard that Japanese government sent the rice produced in Korea to Japan. That's why the price of rice was tripled. The Japanese were stealing our rice. I was angry, but I said nothing because I was so scared. I had seen many terrible things. Japanese police beat, imprisoned, tortured, and even killed many Koreans as they pleased. One day, a Bible woman came to her village. Although she was a woman, she was well-educated and spoke very well. She said that there was a huge demonstration against the Japanese government in Seoul. I thought that that kind of thing belonged to men. But she also said, We, women, are important. You all own this country. Korean people can and should self-determine our country, Korea, not the Japanese emperor. We all are the subjects of history and we can make a difference. When we cry out, 대한독립 만세, the independence of Korea can happen. I couldn't understand her words fully, but I realized that I too am a human and I too have a voice. So I ran to the market and shouted it out with the people. 대한독립 만세! 대한독립 만세! After the Manzi demonstration, Japanese soldiers came to the village. They said that they wanted to apologize for the harsh suppression of the demonstration. But they intentionally made male Christians to come to the JM Church. I heard shooting. and saw the fire. When I ran to help people in the burning church, the Japanese soldier shot me. And I was killed. To me, the Manze movement's goal was to treat me as a human and to treat others as humans. We all are humans. While, while I was shouting Manze with other humans, I dared to dream of a different world. In this short moment, I was fully human. We all are important.